interpreting IR scans for experiment 4, the bromination of trans stillbene to dibromo stillbene. So you must make assignments for the major characteristic absorption bands of the reagent, trans stillbene, and the recovered product 1,2-dibromo, 1,2-diphenylethane, aka dibromo stillbene. I won't take time to review the four steps again since this is a third time through, but I just want to mention that in step number two, where we're to look for the generic scan, there are in fact four generic scans for aromatic compounds. In addition, on page 103 there is a visual um, blow up of the bending absorptions that are unique to aromatics. So here's the first example, trans stillbene, aka E12-diphenylethene. And the first step is to identify the groups that are present in the structure. Well, what are in the structure? What do you see in the structure? I see two of these mono-substituted aromatic rings and one transalkene. And that is all, no methyl, no methylene groups. Step number two is to uh, study the generic scans of the aromatic compounds. And in fact, as I mentioned, there are four different scans because there are four different substitution patterns that we're going to be studying. Uh, they're, they're shown here. A monosubstituted aromatic ring has a single replacement of hydrogen, a single substituent uh, among the six hydrogens on the ring. One has been replaced with an alkyl group. Another arrangement that we'll look at is the 1-2 disubstituted arrangement called an ortho disubstituted pattern. The next one is a 1-3 disubstituted pattern called meta disubstituted. And finally we have a 1-4 disubstituted or para disubstituted aromatic structure. So on this particular slide, I'm showing the generic scan of a monosubstituted aromatic and a meta-disubstituted aromatic. On the next slide, which we'll look at later, we'll see the uh, ortho and para arrangements. So to begin with, you will see several uh, double bond CH stretches around 30-30 wave numbers. So they appear usually as a, a ragged collection of peaks above 3,000. Now why is there more than one? Well, because there are either four hydrogens or in the case of mono, five hydrogens that are absorbing and they won't be exactly in the same location on the spectrum because they'll have slightly different bond strengths depending upon their proximity to the substituents. So they are in fact slightly different. In the case of the metadi substituted, uh, it isn't as ragged, but there still are several in this region. The ring itself stretches, it's a carbon to carbon double bond stretch, at four locations, 1600, 1580, 1500, and 1450 wave numbers in this region here. And the two numbers in parentheses, 1580 and 1450, are generally smaller, sometimes missing, whereas the ones not in parentheses, 1600 and 1500, are usually more pro predominant, but I want you to list all four of them, and that's what you look for. In the case of the monosubstituted aromatic, in this case toluene, notice there's a significant band at 1600. The 1580 is pretty much missing. 1500 is there, and there's the 1450. Go down to the metadisubstituted aromatic, again we have a band significant at 1600. There's the 1580, 1500, and 1450. In addition to these carbon to hydrogen stretches and carbon to carbon stretches, which are usually about the same location regardless of the substitution pattern, there are carbon to hydrogen bends in two different regions, 1700 to 2000 wave numbers in this region here, and between about 700 and 900, which are down here. And these are CH bends, and they do vary 
depending upon the substitution pattern are useful in identifying which type of isomer we're looking at. In the case of um, the bands between 1700 and 2000, they're small bands, typically 2 to 6 CH bends, and they are considered to be overtones of the bands that occur around 700 to 900. Now, I'm not a musician, but according to Wikipedia, for example, middle C on the piano uh, vibrates, the, the string vibrates at approximately 260 hertz. And the, the C in the next octave higher is double that. It's um, 520 hertz. Well, in similar fashion, these are vibrations as well. And the value in this overtone range is roughly twice as much of the frequency value down in this um, basic range here. And so they're, and also they're considerably smaller as well. So these CH bends that are down in the 700 to 900 region are called out-of-plane bends, sometimes called oops bends. In the case of a monosubstituted aromatic, we're looking at two bends, about 690 and about 770 wave numbers. The metadisubstituted aromatic has three absorption bands, pretty similar, 700, 770, and 870. Now, in all honesty, the band at 870 looks like a lot of other carbon-to-carbon -carbon stretches in this region, and pretty difficult to, I find it difficult to distinguish between a mono and a meta by looking at this region. The overtone patterns themselves are often, in my opinion, difficult to identify just what the substitution pattern is, but they certainly do tell me that, in fact, it is an aromatic. Let's look at the next two bands on the next slide. So the orthodisubstituted aromatic and the paradisubstituted aromatics, again, will have multiple absorptions at 30-30 due to the four hydrogen stretching on the carbons, ragged looking, they will also have bands at 1600, 1580, missing in this case, 1500 and 1450, uh, even more missing in the case of the para that's substituted. And again, these are carbon to carbon ring stretches. The overtone patterns are different from each other, but again, somewhat difficult to um, ad strictly identify. However, the outer plane bands in the 700 to 900 regions are pretty easy to distinguish. In the case of an orthodisubstituted aromatic, it is a single absorption band below 800, typically around 770 wave numbers. Pretty hard to miss this. And a paradisubstituted aromatic has a single outer plane band above 800, typically around 830 wave numbers. And these are easy to distinguish, and you can certainly tell these apart from the meta or mono that substituted uh, absorption bands in this region. Now, page 103 shows an expanded view of the bends that occur in aromatic rings. Now, the page lists more than just these four, but we'll only cover these four in this course. Uh, just more detail in this area. This is the 700 to 900 wave number reading uh, region, and this is the 1700 to 2000. Uh, wave number region. So step number three is to look f at the assignments table uh, for the aromatics, and that's on page 118, and we'll look at the alkene later, hence I'm calling this th step 3a. So what you want to copy in your table is just what we spoke of, and it's written here. At 3030 wave numbers, we have several uh, carbon to hydrogen stretches. Uh, 1700 to 2000, we have our double bond CH bends, their overtones, 1600, 1580, 1500, 1450, up to four peaks, uh, carbon to carbon ring stretches. Now, a note here, the 1450 uh, band will, of course, often overlap with carbon to hydrogen bands that occur in uh, methyl or methylene groups. We don't have them in these compounds that we're looking at, but if we did, um, they would simply overlap and it would be hard to distinguish that particular grouping. And finally we have, in our case, the monosubstituted aromatic absorbing at 690 and 770 wave numbers. That is the double bond CH out of plane bend. 
Uh, step 3b, we'll look at the assignment tables for alkenes on page 117. Now, as you look at the alkene, you see it's definitely internal, it's not terminal, and it's a transstereochemistry. So an internal alkene has an absorption band of about 30, 20 wave numbers. In the case of an aromatic, that would be lost in these multiple bands about above 3,000. We wouldn't be able to uh, identify it or pick it out. Likewise, the transalkene has a single absorption band about 1670. It's a good position to identify, but I notice in this particular compound, uh, transstilbene is completely absent. And the reason for that is the extended conjugation we have in this compound. If you follow with me here, that's sigma, pi, 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 sigma. The entire compound is completely conjugated. It's, this has completely conjugated unsaturation. And the effect of that in infrared is it usually lowers the absorption uh, frequency and wave number of a particular band, of the aromatics in particular and uh, it's moved, lowered them so much that it's kind of blended right into this other grouping. We can't actually see it. Uh, in other non-conjugated aromatic alkenes, you'd be more likely to see this band. And finally, uh, at uh, 965, we have evidence of a transalkene. And luckily for us, because this is the only evidence we can see of the alkene in this particular compound, all the other bands are um, cluttered and absorbed by other ones. So our final compound to study is 1,2-dibromo-1,2-diphenylethane. Notice it's an alkane, it's not an alkene. No more alkene here. Uh, no CH3 or CH2 groups. These are There's one hydrogen only on each of these carbons. Now we've already looked at the generic scans of aromatics. And there is no generic scan containing a carbon to bromine stretch. So we'll move along to step three, uh, the assignment tables. So step number three, uh, the assignment table for the carbon to hydrogen stretch is on the bottom of page 116. And I'm simply reading information from that table for halogenated paraffins the carbon to hydrogen stretch is raised above 3,000 wave numbers due to the presence of electronegative halogens. Well, in fact, we wouldn't be able to see that in an aromatic because of the multiple ragged CH stretches around 30-30 in that vicinity. However, there is a carbon to bromine stretch that appears somewhere in the broad range of 690 to 515 wave numbers. That's not very helpful in identifying its exact location, but fortunately it's a very large band, so it's easy to pick out. And in fact, when you look at the scan of dibromo stilbene, you'll see a large absorption band at about 600 wave numbers due to that carbon to bromine stretch. So step four is for you to copy the assignments, the wave numbers, and the causes into the appropriate boxes, and I'll leave that for you to do. So just remember that in addition to interpreting the IR scans for the pure starting reagent transstilbene and the pure product dibromostilbene, you must also interpret the IR scan of your recovered product, which should be dibromostilbene. So in the IR scan of your recovered product, identify the absorption bands arising from the product and look for evidence of residual unreacted reagent. Enjoy.